All right, Mr. Chair, we are live on YouTube, so you can start your presentation. Okay. Good morning. Due to COVID-19, <coughs> Committee of Adjustment panel uh, public hearings <coughs> are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar, an online digital platform and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may watch on YouTube. <clears throat> Participants who've registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, or telephone, and have the option of participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry, and when your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Those participating by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled and you will only be visible during your five minute allotting speak, allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you will be reinstated as an, as an attendee. <clears throat> Committee of Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the written submission deadline. Members of the public and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or other, other any other panelist controls during a video appearance. The host will remove you from the panelist role if you fail to respect these instructions. Okay. <clears throat> land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land we're meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe. The Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Section 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever properties to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because the Committee of Adjustment and the Toronto Local Appeal Body, when the events of an appeal, will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the decision, of the committee, you may be able to appeal the decision to the Toronto Local Appeal Body or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. However, the provincial government recently amended the Planning Act and generally removed rights of third parties to appeal Committee of Adjustment decisions. As of November 28, 2022, only the applicant, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, specified pub, uh, persons and public bodies, as those terms are defined in the Planning Act, are permitted to appeal decisions of the Committee of Adjustment. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure will be as follows. We'll call, I'll call each item in the order listed in the, in the agenda after first dealing with some preliminary matters and getting rid of uh, any deferral uh, requests, uh, dealing with those at the outset. In making your submissions where a, uh, an application is, is not contested, uh, meaning that there's no one else appearing, it may be contested in letters, but uh, there's no one else appearing to uh, present uh, in public, the applicant or agent may proceed with the presentation if desired. When the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to address the committee, and the committee may ask questions and or take, then take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. The clock is showing on the board, and uh, someone will comment when you're reaching, uh, uh, exceeded the five minute, and ask you to uh, quickly wrap up. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address at the outset, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent will proceed first and make their presentation to the committee on the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals made at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if being substantially revised in order to ensure that the revised application is accurate 
and that all those entitled to notice of the application have been informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they finish their presentation. And when all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues and answer those questions that were raised by the speakers. That will then mark the end of the discussion and the application is then taken into the committee for a decision. Okay, before we get started, uh, some business uh, items to take care of. Firstly, we have the confirmation of the minutes of the last meeting. Uh, the date of that meeting was November the staff? 24th. 24th. November 24th. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes, please? Any bit of symbol moves? Thank you. I see Laura Alderson's hand up to second that. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? And the motion is the uh, motion carries the minutes are approved. Uh, we have received a, a copy of the schedule of hearing dates for uh, the year 2023. Uh, can I have a motion to approve uh, those dates? Any Simone moves? Thank you. And Mr. Taylor, I saw your hand up as seconder. All in favor? Okay, that motion is approved. <clears throat> Madam Secretary Treasurer, are there any uh, files to be closed today? None today. Um, and just a note, if anyone is watching on YouTube, um, there appears to be a bandwidth issue. So I don't think you're seeing any video when we're on WebEx, the members are on video. Uh, but their screen highlights in blue if they're speaking. We're trying to get that resolved, but um, just in case anyone's wondering. Sorry, go okay. ahead, Mr. Chair. No problem. Okay, so uh, we have our consolidated memo from planning uh, requesting deferrals. Uh, we have three items on that list, and they're all in the afternoon uh, session, and there's a couple other matters in the afternoon session. In the morning session, it looks like just in our re review of the, in my review, anyway, of the application, we do have a couple of items. Uh, we have one uh, item number nine we'll do first, where it looks like it's a request uh, from the applicant. Uh, we got through, and then it looks like uh, staff, we, unless you want to do it, we have a, um, I think maybe that's it. Yeah, the rest are in the afternoon. Uh, I thought when we had some others, um, there's a TRCA request, but there's only item nine that's from the agent, so right. we can deal with that one right. as the it comes. TR, the TRC request is that the morning or the afternoon? Um, and, uh, see that or we can we number should, number 24. 24 okay so that's the afternoon okay so we'll decide whether we deal with that at the outset of that hearing this afternoon okay so in that case uh let's move let's look at number 9 46 chartwell road uh the speaker for that is um mr gina uh zanjibadi and this is this is for a detached dwelling with an attached garage with eight variances. There's uh, a planning report. Uh, there's a presentation, but there's a planning report recommending re refusal for overdevelopment of the lot. And they advise they would like to keep working with the applicant. So I believe that in a subsequent email, Mr. Zinjabadi has agreed that he wishes to advise that he wishes to defer. Mr. Zinjabadi? Uh, Zinjabadi? Yes. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Matthew says, I'm Gilboy, I'm the agent. Okay, so you're uh, looking for a refusal to continue to work with community planning to make changes. And actually, in the additional materials, we did receive a revised notice um, with seven variances and six have been revised. But uh, notwithstanding that, you're still looking for the deferral? Uh, yes, because planning uh, community planning said that they need time to review the revised notice and the revised drawings, and as and they ask uh, for deferral. So we are um, willing to defer the application to uh, get both parties time to uh, discuss the application further. Okay, thank you, uh, members. Any questions for Ms. Uh, Janjibadi, or is someone ready to wait with a motion to defer? Danny Bellissimo moves for deferral. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo, seconder for that. Laura Alderson, thank you. All in favor? Okay, the matter is unanimously deferred. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you back in the new year. Okay. 
Okay, in that case, I guess we can start with item number one. <clears throat> and that is 209 Alder Bray Avenue. It's minimized every time. Okay, this is an application uh, to construct a second story addition above the existing dwelling and the existing garage and the rear yard will be maintained. There's seven variances and uh, four letters of support. And I believe that's all we have on this application. The uh, agent is Joe Dome. Welcome, Mr. Dome. Uh, yes, my name is Joe Dome, 133 Torres Hill Avenue, agent for the owner. Okay, good morning. Uh, is it very straightforward? It's a straight top up and you're maintaining the existing garage. All you have four letters of support, nothing from any of the city departments or area neighbors other than the four letters of support, but no, I meant no concerns. Mm -hmm. Anything you'd like to advise the committee of? Um, I would just like to um, point out that the uh, the length um, of the house is actually significantly under the bylaw and uh, so no uh, length variance is being requested. Um, there are um, examples of um, uh, GFA that have been um, approved in the area higher than what is being requested. Um, and we just feel that this is a, a very uh, reasonable application. The, the setback uh, to the north side, uh, the neighbor is on board with that, uh, so there are no issues there. Okay, well, you know, typically top ups are one of the more simpler applications. Yes. For uh, many, many questions for Mr. Dome members or someone ready for a motion. If no one has any questions, I'm happy to make that motion. Um, I believe this meets the four tests under the planning act and move for approval subject to no conditions. Thank you, Mrs. Great. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. Second. Mr. Mo seconds the motion. Thank you. All in favor. Okay. It's, uh, I can't see everyone, but I assume it's unanimous. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dome. Have a wonderful day. We'll have a happy new year. Um, <clears throat> item number two is three Kirk Braden Road East. It's an application for a two story rear and north side additions and a second story addition above the existing dwelling. So a top up plus an addition. There are uh, were eight. We have a revised agenda sheet to highlight it for the agenda. Uh, showing Jay, there were eight variances. There are now seven, and two of those have been revised. We have the revised plans and zoning waiver. Transportation has advised that they are fine with the application. And we have a letter of support from 2 Bernice Avenue across the street, or I assume the rear. And we have urban forestry requesting condition number two. Speaker for this is uh, Arshad Siddiqui, uh, as well as we have the I guess we have the uh, homeowner on the line, as well as we have an area resident from 141 Prince Edward Drive South. Mr. So Chair, here first. I'd like to bring to your attention yes. the area resident is present on the call, but did not communicate um, with me during the mic check. So with that being said, uh, maybe we do a quick mic check with them right now um, to make sure that yeah. they're Good idea. Thank you. Yep. Area, area residents at 141. One Prince Edward Drive. Go ahead with your microphone. Present. Present. Thank you. Okay, we'll be back to you in a, after we hear from the applicant. So it's good to know. Thank you, Adam. It's good to know if someone is here as to how the applicant proceeds uh, with his presentation. Um, okay, uh, so Arshad Siddiqui. Uh, yes, good morning, Mr. Chair, committee member. This is Arshad Siddiqui, architect and authorized agent uh, for the property owner at 3 Kirk Bread and um, Toby Cook. Uh, so, we first of all agree to the urban forestry condition as per their memo received on December 1st, 2022, that for the submission of a complete application for a permit to injure or remove a privately owned tree, uh, we will, as part of the building permit process, uh, so we will be engaging an arborist to perform his assessment and provide us a report what needs to be done with the privately owned tree in the front yard. So that is acceptable. Uh, we are requesting seven variances through uh, this minor variance application. And uh, I consider six of them is very minor in nature uh, with regards to building height of 9.58 as opposed to 9.5 is within 1% of difference. Um, the uh, maximum 
platform up on the second story of 4.12 as opposed to required 4.0 per bylaw is within 3% of difference. Uh, with regards to front yard setback, uh, required is 7.83. And our uh, proposed 7.0 meter is basically the existing um, uh, setback of the existing property since we are maintaining more than 50% of the exterior walls to keep it in our durations permit. So we are uh, bound by that front yard setback to keep it at there. We are not going beyond that. We are keeping it where the building is existing. Uh, the architectural feature uh, uh, encroaching into the front yard setback uh, of 0.87 as opposed to required 0.6 um, uh, is basically due to the elevation requirement of overlapping the masses. So it's only a portion of second story which is encroaching a bit more and hence we are requesting uh, uh, this minor variance be accepted. Uh, we uh, the existing garage dimensions not meeting the bylaw is again an existing condition. Uh, we have received no uh, concern from transportation services, so that should be acceptable. And uh, let me jump to the seventh one for the uh, maximum height of the soffit. We worked with the planning department and, and brought the variance down as well from requested 7 point something to 6.86. So we are within 6% of difference for the bylaw. Uh, going back to the number six variance, the uh, overall uh, floor space index of a uh, proposed of 0.61 as opposed to required 0.45 uh, is basically we have uh, uh, buildings uh, lot coverage within the zoning bylaw, uh, buildings length and width is also within the zoning bylaw, uh, the uh, uh, increased gross floor area uh, can be attributed to the uh, proposed footprint of the house to cover the area behind the garage. And uh, we are expanding, extending the rear side by one meter on main floor and by two meter partially on second floor. Uh, so the real expansion of the footprint is on the rear side of the property within the zoning bylaw and we have the letter of support from the uh, the property owner uh, of the of, uh, of the property at rear side of the the project at to burnish avenue uh, to cite some uh, similar examples we have uh, witnessed uh, planning staff supporting uh, a floor space index of more than 0.66 within the same neighborhood so we uh, believe that 0.61 should be within the acceptable range and hence we request uh, the the variances be uh, approved. Okay, thank you for your presentation, uh, Mr. Siddiqui. Um, before we get to the, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Siddiqui? Danny Bilisman has a very quick question. Uh, the, the architectural feature that's encroaching in the front is, didn't say exactly what that were. Are they the uh, gables and the, the surrounds around the top uh, floor? Uh, th these are just the uh, uh, modern bands around the the uh, second floor window. Right. So they're just okay. coming out. Right? Yeah. So it's it's what you outline in your elevations in white and black. I see it. Okay. So th those are those are like shade shade elements basically to shade the windows. That are that's out. Right. And yes. emphasize the outline of the uh, elevation. That is correct. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you for that photo. Actually, I was going to see to leave up the photo, but we actually, I would like you to put up uh, staff the um, the uh, bu bu uh, the location map. Um, this lot uh, uh, there appears to be the standard and what we call a key lot situation. So they have the approval of the lot behind, but because there are three adjacent lots on the side on the flankage, uh, the 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 speaker is uh, the person who you expect to be most directly affected by that at 141 being the middle of the three lots. The one at the front already has the house next to it. I assume the other two houses behind will be looking at something with the rear addition that they weren't looking at before. 
the question is, I guess, for the committee is uh, how that we only look at the amount in variance uh, in terms of the issue. So just to put that in context, let's hear from uh, the neighbor is um, Alessandro Giramonte. Hello, good morning, Mr. Chair and committee. Good morning. So we've submitted seven photos that we- yeah, Sorry, just want to start off by stating, I know it's ridiculous, we have to state your name and address oh. for the record when you start. No problem. Yeah, sorry about Thank that. You. So my name is Alessandro Monte. I'm here as well with Mayor yep. Mecca Bishvili. We are the owners at the property, at, as you mentioned, on Prince Edward Drive, which is the yep. center property there, 141. Yeah. So um, if I have, we have a brief statement we'd like to read, if that's if that's acceptable to the committee. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, we've submitted seven photos that we will also refer to. Um, mm -hmm. We object to the requested variances because you can. You can. But first, I'll ask staff to if you want to flip to another pitch, picture and just ask them, and then I'll let you what you want for your okay. picture submitted. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So we object to the requested variances because a house with the same for a few reasons, uh, namely, a house houses with the same floor layouts and same amount of rooms can be built without asking for the variances. Um, these have been these. There are houses in the neighborhood. Uh, that are built on our street and that have been rebuilt as well that are respecting the current bylaws. Um, specifically, we were, were concerned about variances that on the side and exterior, uh, the side and the rear, uh, you know, variances number four and seven amongst the, amongst a few other ones, um, specifically with the west and rear side of the home. So the variances requested, in our opinion, are too large and important to be considered minor. Um, to our family's property and lifestyle, there will be a loss of sunlight, privacy, view, spacing, and openness, which will, will result directly from the mass, height, and bulk of the proposed development. Uh, a primary factor considered when purchasing our current home in this particular neighborhood was the degree of spaciousness, sunlight, privacy, and privacy that was dictated by the zoning bylaws existing when the neighborhood was developed. A higher purchase price and as well as higher annual taxes were paid for the enjoyment of these quali qualities. And we believe that we're entitled to protection from uh, from a reduction in zoning standards. Uh, we also believe that the municipality's for, former zoning policies should be relied upon, as it, it is a breach of trust if and when where they are, are diminished. Uh, the proposed development, in our opinion, is out of scale, uh, out of character, and destabilizes the character of the neighborhood. As seen in the three photos submitted um, of the streetscape, that's the first one there uh, that's on the screen. Uh, there will be a break in the pattern and continuity of the street, and the development will stand out rather than blend in. So there's three photos that we submitted. If you if you'd like, we can look at those. So this one is directly that's the property ad directly adjacent to the three Kirk that's number five Kirk Braden. Uh, looking down, so if you see, there's our, our also a rebuilt home uh, that's on the north side. Uh, there's also a rebuilt home just across the road from them that fits the pattern in the in the in the vernacular of the neighborhood much, much more directly. Um, so also we would like to point out um, the deck and the second floor balcony. Uh, privacy will be dramatically diminished. Uh, there's some photos here of mock-ups that we, were, we had uh, made for us. Uh, privacy will de be de dramatically diminished as there will be a visual intrusion into our garden, backyard, and our private family areas. Similarly, the windows proposed on the west wall of the house will be looking into our private gardens and our private family areas. You can see the four in the four pictures provided with the before and afters submitted from the view of our private spaces. In summary, we would ask that the west wall and heights be our, our concerns be considered and the west wall and heights as well as the balconies be uh, considered by the development. I would also like to point out there's a second uh, a, there's a second before and after from further and this is at this at our side. We have a courtyard. Just our homes are actually quite similar with three Kirk Braden and five Kirk Braden. Or sorry, in one forty one, um, there there's a courtyard. There's like one of those old, you know, nineteen fifties courtyard homes. Um, so this is a picture of our courtyard. But there's another photo in the rear on the rear um, our rear patio. And I will see yeah. the other photos that uh, the speaker is referring to. Yeah. Uh, so thank you. That will be that. That's that's sitting on our rear deck. Mr. Rear patio. It's not a, it's a patio. Mr. Chair and members, we're attempting to scroll through them, but either due to their size or the bandwidth issues we're currently experiencing at the uh, Civic Center, um, we can't. We're trying to show them, and they're they're taking their time to load and move. 
Okay, well, we see this one, so yeah. this is the one I'm sure members will be interested in uh, perhaps asking some questions about. Yes. So, uh, I, yeah, I, I think for, from our perspective, that's that's pretty well summarizes our position. And uh, we're happy that the, the that the property will be developed. We just ask that, you know, our, our concerns be uh, considered in the development. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Giramonte. Um, we'll see if the members have any questions. I'll just point out, as you know, the committee only deals with the variance, the amount of variance. So, and if you notice, some of these variances are rather, you know, the, the overlooking uh, second story platform uh, is only point one point. 0.12 of a meter, he's entitled to that as a right at four meters. So the committee has to look at what the applicant is entitled to as of right and what the, the variance is. Same with some of the other ones, it's only 0 0.08 over meters in the height. So, and having said that, I'll turn it over and see if the members have any questions for you. Um, so, Danny Bellismo has a couple of questions. I, I, yep. For some reason, I, I couldn't hear you. I don't know if you can you hear me okay? Yes. Good. Okay. Because your voice was coming through garbled on my end. Uh, did you say you were opposed to variance number four and seven? Were those the two variances that you outlined? You said something. We were specific. Yes, we were specific. The height was requested. Yeah, I know so that there was. Was is it number? Did you say number four? Because number four has been removed. You you've seen the revision page. This is the challenge that we're having as well. Okay. Because it was so a late just, submission. just to let you, just to let you know, number four has been re, uh, removed. In case so you I'm haven't looking, seen that. Okay. I'm looking then, at the uh, yeah. Yeah, so number four is out. Um, and did you say number seven was the other one? You you mentioned two, I think. So what I, I'm I'm a little confused, and maybe you guys can help with that as well, because I'm looking at page uh, drawing number two A two zero eight, and I believe that see there was a revised drawing submitted very late uh, that we just saw yesterday. Okay. No, I just wanted to clarify the, the the variance issues. So it was number four, and did you say number seven? Yes, it was the, okay. it was the, it was those, the, those are the 2 main ones that you raised. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that because I couldn't hear and can staff put the pictures back up. There was a picture in there of a, a street street image. Um, is, is there a problem to put those up? Can you go back a couple? We also street, with all street. due respect, we also noted number 3 with the soffit heights that okay, were that one there. Sorry that one. So the, this, the, this is your picture, right? You submitted this because I hadn't seen this till today. Yes. Okay, so that blue car on the far left in that house, is that a two story house? Uh, on the far left? Yes. 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 Okay. So, one and, and a half and two story. Yep. And how far is that from the, from your house? Is that across the street? So that would be on the north side of Kirk Braden Avenue. Okay. So, so that oh. shows that there are two story homes within a few houses. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, and thank you. We want, yes, we, we want, yes, I, I just wanted to clarify that because I, I thought you mentioned height at one point. Thanks. We, we Thanks did. Yeah, we, I, yeah, we do. It I, just, I, I, had, do with that. I had not seen these pictures. They were not in our package. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Mr. Germont, just to point out, um. Yeah, you were aware that there were some changes made. If you put the, the notice of some highlighted changes, so the applicant did remove a variance and lower two of them. So, in fact, the uh, the height variance is only 0 0.08 of a meter, which is in this like indiscernible. And again, the soffit height is only point is about a foot over at 0.36 of a meter. So, if you were were you aware of those revisions that were made kind of late, or when you reviewed, uh, you know, when you got the notice, you would have gotten the earlier one. Yes, I would assume, right? So they did have made some steps to lessen the impact by these three changes that you see before you. Okay, you, you may not. I don't know if you checked the pack uh, the I, I, AIC that uh, when that was there. So your comments were before. So at least you have take some solace that they have lowered. Uh, the height and the soffit height, uh, so that it's pretty small over what it what what the amount of variance, and they remove the uh, side exterior main wall height. So I think that's what Mr. Um, so uh, Mr. Bliss was just trying to figure out what your com what your concerns. Again, the rear balcony, it's permitted other than 0.12 of a meter of it. We appreciate we, that. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted you to understand that. I, uh, I wanted to ask. May I ask a question? Sure. Mr. The um, so I see a re I'm looking on the website now. I see a revised drawing, which is drawing number A two zero eight. 
Um, there's still a number in green on that drawing that shows 9.58 meters. Yeah, it went down from 9.88. Okay. But the permitted is seven. What's the permitted height for that? Uh, for 9. that? 9.5, it looks like. There is number five out in front of you. So it looks like they're only over by 0 0.08 of a, of a meter. So that's. And the, and the sidewall, Mr. Chair, the, I see that there's the, the sidewall there. So in the, I guess that's called the gable end, correct? You'd have to ask Mr. Bellissimo. <laughs> But that 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 variance has been eliminated. Okay, so the gable end, so the 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 pie section in the gable end, does that count as wall height? Well, I can't answer your questions. You will have to have the applicant re uh, respond to your comments and questions after okay. you've finished. Okay, so okay, we'll thank you. okay, we'll ask uh, Mr. Siddiqui about that. Okay, uh, any other questions for Mr. Giramonti, or we'll go back to. Uh, Mr. Siddiqui for his rebuttal. That's okay. Okay. Mr. Siddiqui. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, neighbor, for their comments. Uh, so I can clarify that the two heights in question are one is the building height, which is the top of roof, uh, the peak of the roof, and the other is soffit height, which is the uh, you can say the bottom of the roof uh, where the roof starts sloping up. So these two are uh, slightly off of the zoning bylaw, uh, 9.58 as opposed to 9.5 and 6.86 as, as opposed to 6.5. Uh, this is basically due to the current house being uh, slightly above the grade. Uh, you can see there are few steps when you reach the main floor. So we, we tried our best to remain within the uh, bylaw, but because of some existing constraints, we are a little bound to uh, uh, meet the zoning bylaw. And with regards to the uh, one comment made by the uh, neighbor about the character of the house, uh, we have seen modern contemporary elevations uh, uh, within the same street, uh, I can quote nine Kirk Braden Avenue. It's pretty modern in nature. So I don't think we are uh, uh, bound by any uh, any authority to, to not have a contemporary or modern elevation uh, for this house. Okay. I hope I covered all the items and uh, I've seen committee members already responded to and clarified the concerns. So, okay, yes. the platform and other. Okay, uh, members, any questions uh, for the agent or for the neighbor at this point? Or we'll take it into committee for a decision. If there are no questions, Danny Bellissimo is ready to make some, a motion. Okay, go ahead there. Uh, could staff put on uh, the uh, pictures? The it's uh, the cover sheet of the addition. It's the exonometrics and showing the other elevation exonometric of this proposal. I just wanted to comment on on the design of this uh, this particular scheme. It's the C Architectural Limited. That's one there. Thank you. So, um, to, to me, this is a very interesting proposal because the divided gables, which are basically looks like two homes, uh, reduces the visual massing of the uh, building. Because my first concern was was massing. So I I find that the uh, based on this this image, that uh, I would like to move for approval. I'd like to for move move for approval uh, based on the revision page, and that would be. Uh, the, the uh, items are one, two, three, five, six, seven, and eight, as per the revision page. I believe there are no uh, no conditions. Oh, sorry, no, there is a condition. This is F two. There's a condition F two, forestry two. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Member, uh, seconded for Mr. Bellissimo's motion. Can't see everyone's hands, so just call out. I'm happy to second Taylor. I see Mr. Sorry. Taylor stand up. Yep. Mr. Taylor has got that. Yep. Okay, second. Okay, all in favor? 
uh, unanimous approval. Thank you to the applicant and thank you to the neighbor. And, thank you, Commissioner. Um, okay. Happy holidays. Next application is item number three. Very straightforward, simple application. One fifteen Simon Street. It's to removal of the existing raised patio and collapsing retaining wall, and to construct a new concrete patio and a barrier-free ramp. There was only one variance, the uh, percentage of the rear yard landscaping, soft landscaping. And we have a copy of an order to comply from November 30th, 2021, a planning report for information where they don't object, and nine letters of support. That's all we have. And the speaker is Ryan Dunlop, uh, the agent for the applicant. Good morning, Mr. Dunlop. Good morning, uh, Ryan Dunlop, 600 Fleet Street, and I'm the uh, agent for the homeowner. Okay, uh, as I said at the outset, pretty straightforward application. You have a positive planning report explaining the situation. Uh, would you like to like to add anything or let the committee know anything? Or uh... Uh, I, I I think it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, what we're trying to do, the homeowner has uh, some mobility issues, so we're looking to um, to put the the ramp in for to assist with that. So okay, this is cleans up that broken falling apart the retaining wall as well um so that's it you're only deficient uh, looks like 36 square meters of rear landscaping um was that the situation like that currently as well it's not like you're making things substantially worse by what you're doing yeah it, 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 if anything, yeah if, if anything we're, we're improving um improving what was you know already there so Okay, thank you, Mr. Dunlop. Members, any questions for Mr. Dunlop or is someone ready for a motion? Uh, Danny Bellissimo is ready for a motion if no further questions. Mr. Um, Mr. Chair and members, can, when you um, make your, your decision, can you all um, call out your decision? We can't see you guys in the chamber, so it's a little harder for us staff here to, to note. Thank you. Okay, I think the last, you were aware of the last application, and I believe it was Mr. Bellissimo's motion, seconded by Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep, we got last one. Make sure for the rest of them that we, uh, uh, yeah, you, I can't see the, all the hands also, but I'll try to uh, summarize that so you're aware for the minutes to get it right. Okay. Okay, so do I think that we vote on that or we just had? Sorry, I, I, I haven't made a motion yet. <laughs> okay. uh, so having designed many uh, ramps for wheelchair access to homes and commercial buildings, this is a very interesting scheme and uh, has very little impact on landscaping or actually improves the situation. So I'd like to move for approval um, of the variances, no, no conditions. Okay, thank and, you. Uh, and I'm happy to second that motion, Laura Alderson. Thank you. All in favor? Approve. Unanimous. Unanimous, okay. Thank you, Mr. Dunlop. Okay, we'll move over to item number four. It's 30 Baywood. Baywood Road, and um, it's an application to uh, permit two personal service shops in Unit 17 and two, Unit 224 within the existing mixed-use building. There is one variance, a proposed personal service shop is not a permitted use in an E-zone, and we have before us a cover letter. Um, the use is to a... Uh, it's a tattoo uh, parlor, I guess. Uh, and the letter also outlines the other uses in the complex. Planning is looking for refusal or a two year limit to vacate. Um, appears we'll perhaps get some clarification. It's, it's, so it seems like it's an existing use and it's a permission to vacate as opposed to a two year trial period, which we sometimes see in these circumstances. Just wanted to clarify that that's what we're looking at here. And we only have the one speaker, Bill Edred, uh, agent for the applicant. Welcome, sir. Yes, good morning. Okay, so at the outset, if you um, make a presentation, if you can let us know, is this an existing use um, based on my interpretation of what planning's looking for here and why this uh, application is worthy of support? Okay, yes, I'd like to go through it. Um, and I, I will okay. explain that. Uh, the use uh, is an existing. Um, basically, it's one owner. Uh, on the lower level, it's Olivia uh, Beauty Room. So basically, it's uh, 
uh, business that's doing uh, a number of things, including aesthetics. Um, just give you the short list: uh, laser hair removal, uh, hair restoration, anti-aging, and so forth, um, as well as tattoo removal. And interesting enough, oh. on the second second floor, suite number two two four, the same ownership once again. Uh, it is a bit existing. They are doing tattoos within a sixty five meter squared area. So. Uh, it offers, uh, obviously, you can get your tattoo upstairs and then go downstairs, have it removed if you like. But uh, um, basically what it is, is a, it's, a, it's a personal service shop at the lower level uh, for the purposes of beauty treatments, upper level tattoo. Once again, it is existing. Uh, they got a visit from um, bylaw uh, enforcement uh, about a year ago or so, asked to get a business license, of course, going through with the zoning cert certificate, the personal service uses are not permitted. So maybe I should I can just go through uh, why I feel that yeah, uh, the use just, is, just to clarify. So you, yeah. is it just the re, is it just I I say it wrong? Is it just the removal of tattoos and all the other hair and laser and aesthetics, um, or is it also for putting on the tattoos? Not that I don't know whether that makes a difference or not. <laughs> well, um, sweet. Suite 224, which is on the second level, it's a small suite, 75 meters squared. That's a tattoo parlor. The first level, uh, a larger area, it's about 210 to 220 meters squared. That's the beauty shop. Okay, is the beauty shop permitted also, or? They're both personal service They're uses. Personal, personal service, service uses are not permitted in the what they consider as the core employment area. Okay, so okay. I just want to clarify, you do, it's both the... <laughs> Tattoo the small space on the second floor, and then as well as the removal the level, yes. of the tattoos. Uh, if they change their mind, plus <laughs> aesthetic type uh, skin care and uh, electrolysis or laser or whatever. Yes, okay. uh, a, whole, let a us, whole host of uh, a whole host of things. So yeah, let us know why do you feel this should be permitted, and also you know a further summary is set out in your letter as to I understand one units one and eight is a banquet hall. And what yeah. the other uses are in this complex? Yeah, so basically, it's a it's a mixed use. I mean, even planning uh, suggests it's a mixed use building. Uh, the a larger tenant is Grand Banquet Hall. Uh, they occupy the uh, the most space in the entire building. There's also a small appliance shop, a bakery, um, a Kenny's Cakes uh, store. Essentially, um, there's a couple of minor offices up on the second floor, and there's also a barber shop. Um, this is core employment. Uh, I would consider the, this particular site more peripheral. Um, I mean, it's basically located between the uh, the cemetery and uh, residential to the uh, the very east side. Um, there's a whole mix of uses along here. Uh, the, the committee is well aware that uh, I, I think the idea of core employment in a lot of these areas uh, re really is general, um, you know, employment. Uh, there, there's a mixture of uses. Uh, just for an example, um, as far as uses that aren't, I, I would not consider as core employment. Uh, flea markets, the banquet halls, number of churches, a mosque, uh, there's car dealerships, other beauty uh, uh, shops and, and, uh, and salons, uh, what they consider the Albion sh shopping mall with once again within an employment area that has a whole bunch of uh, uses that I would not consider as employment, uh, crematorium, cemetery. So I think the whole idea of the core employment is, as they say, and it's an old provision in the um, City of Toronto bylaw, is to try and not bring um, you know people into the core employment areas. Yet uh, you know the majority, I would have to say, a, a good majority at least on Baywood and the street and behind uh, of the uses seem to be uh, uses that I would not consider necessarily as employment. So, with a small use such as this, um, you know, once again, it's a mixed use building, smaller units. Um, you know, it, it, it's personal service by by any means. Uh, I would say is and could be considered as complementary uh, to a general employment area. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's bringing in uh, 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 people. It, it's uh, you know, it's complementary to what what is you know very close a residential area uh, just to the east. Um, minor use. Uh, I have no issue with it being considered as uh, temporary to have. Um, you know, sort of a, a period to just make sure that there's no issues pertaining to the use. Um, I sort of disagree with uh, with planning's comment that uh, you know, give it to your appro approval for the use to vacate the building. Uh, I really don't think a personal service use of this ma magnitude uh, um, is really uh, any anything that's considered adverse in an employment area. And, and in fact, I think it's complementary. Um, I mean, it's uh, I would say desirable just in the fact that uh, it adds uh, tenants and space that uh, had previously been uh, vacated. Um, uh, you know, they get a business license, they pay their taxes like any other business. Uh, I, I really don't see any uh, adverse effects for this particular use in this uh, location. 
and I just asked for the committee to consider approving it, but I'd like to see if we can get more than a two year period. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the two year period, like I said, is was different than most. Usually when you see with the patio and a restaurant or some use, they're doing it for a trial period. But here, how long has it been there? Uh, are you aware how long they've been there thus far? I think they moved in in 2021. And then last year, last January, by law enforcement caught up with them. Yeah, okay. So I'm just pulling, looking at the planning report, and it says in there, according to policy 4.6.2, uh, it goes on to say, the quote from the uh, policy is, uses that would attract the general public into the interior of employment lands and possibly disrupt industrial operations are generally not permitted in core employment areas. I would certainly agree with that if you have some heavy, uh, you know, um, some heavy use or disruptive use, and then someone comes in for something more uh, personal service, and then they're complaining about the noise or the smell or, you know, the danger of coming onto the site or passing through the site. Here, what I appear, appear to hear is that most of the other uses do the same thing. They do attract the public. Uh, it talks about the wider area that if you have a big industrial area, like, you know, West and Seals area I'm familiar with, you do have yeah. small restaurants to service those people. So they have somewhere to eat, they can do their banking or whatever. But this seems to be that this particular plaza is basically, that's what they're doing. They're bringing the public in. Yeah, so, and, and, and indeed, uh, many other of the buildings uh, nearby are doing the same thing. As I said, with the fleet market. Okay, let's see. Let's see if some of the other members have sure. any questions or comments. I actually do have a question of the applicant, if I could. Um, was this business, I know it, it's a, an existing condition, it's been there for a while, but uh, was this uh, business able to get a business license or was there a problem because of the zoning? They, they currently a business have license. a business license is what I'm asking. Sorry, uh, yes, and I apologize for cutting you off there. Uh, they do not have a business license. They applied for the business license and found out that they had to go through and get the zoning certificates. Right. And obviously that that brought up the fact that a personal service use is not permitted. Right. And yet there is a barber shop in the same building. There is. I don't know the circumstances of the barber shop um, exactly how long they've been there. But uh, once again, I think uh, they've been just informed from my understand from the owner that uh, potentially they have to go through the same pr process essentially. Okay. Right, that the majority, you. yeah, the majority uses the banquet hall. I mean, it's one to eight. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Any other uh, questions? A question okay. from from Palmer here. Um, yep. Is the tenure is it a, a rental or is it an ownership situation? Here. Yeah, this this is strictly rental. Rental. Do you know how long the lease is for? I believe uh, five year with five year extension. So it's so there. So there are two years rent. into it. Is that correct? It's they're two years into it, so it would be another three years. Roughly three years additional, yes. Okay. I right have reasons too, I guess. Is Sorry, what's that, Michael? Is it possible to find out the exact um, leasing arrangement, like what the date is? I can certainly find that out. I just can't do it right this moment. You can't do it at this moment. Okay. Uh, I mean, I is can it? make a phone call if you like, but uh, uh, it would be a little odd to be doing that. I'm happy to do so if you like. Because uh, I wouldn't mind making a motion to extend it for that for that lease period. But yeah, I'd like to know maybe, what that lease period is. Maybe we can stand this down for what fifteen minutes or whatever. Sure, I can make the phone call. I can certainly find out. But would that be appropriate, Chair? Well, yeah, I guess then they'd have we stand it down. I guess the motion was that they'd have to come back for further approval should they wish to remain. Um, and this, if we could find that out, it would be city, helpful. Uh, second chance, to, I guess, to see how it uses evolve and whether, you know, three or four years from now, if that's the situation, whether the situation is any different. So, or uh, I can, I guess, I we can hand it down and find out when the lease expiry date is. If that's what uh, the members, I think would it like. would be helpful. Yes. Okay. Yep, that, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy to make the phone call, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be here for the uh, when it comes back. But uh, give me five minutes, fifteen minutes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Okay, we'll Mr. Thank Chair, you. members. Before Bill, before you leave, when you do find the answers, please email me Adam Wills W I L L S at Toronto CA when you have the information, and I can bring it to the chair's attention that you're ready to be heard again. Okay, Adam Wills W I L L S I S or correct I S. W-I-L-L-S, okay. correct, yep. All right, talk soon. 
Great. Thank you. Okay, let's move over to item number five then, uh, 32 Bracefield Avenue. It's an application to construct the second story addition above the existing dwelling, so a top up. We have three variances, and um, we have some supporting material, an arborist report, transportation has no concerns, ravines and natural feature protection have no comment, and TRCA have no objection. And that's all we have. The speaker is Paul DeCuna. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Paul DeCuna, architect and agent for this project. Hey. Uh, very straightforward. I don't believe we need a presentation for it, uh, unless uh, some of the members would like. We have three variances, perhaps. I don't know if you'd like to give a brief introduction on this top up, uh, or I'll see if anyone has any questions. Mr. Chair, are yes. you asking me to make a, a, pre a presentation or just a No, I'm saying I don't believe we need one. Oh, okay. But what would you like to, you know, it's up to you and you'd like to advise, uh, just advise, uh, you know, uh, the committee of anything. No, I, I, I think we've we've uh, been through a fairly lengthy process with TRCA and they're, they've been very happy with, uh, with the uh, proposal and you're, as you've stated, they have no objection to the city. Uh, the municipality itself has had no objection. We've made, uh, we've submitted a presentation that we would have been very happy to go through today. Um, mm -hmm. But if you feel that's not required, then I think we're we're fine as well. We okay. feel that, that, that you back onto this uh, ravine at uh, 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 near Kill Street. I'm familiar with the area. Um, anyone have any questions for Mr. Dakuna? Uh, I don't. Uh, if if no one has any questions, I'm prepared to make a motion. Uh, you're aware of the TRCA review fee, I'm sure. There's a review fee for this application. Um, but I don't think there's anything from any other city department, so I'm prepared to uh, make a motion for approval. I believe this meets the four tests and um, move for approval subject to nothing, to no conditions. Thank you. Second the motion. Seconds the motion. Okay, thank you, Danny. All in favor? And I say unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, thank sir. You, Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman, to the committee. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item number six is 223 Edenbridge Drive. And uh, it's an application for a second story addition above the existing dwelling, a front porch, and a rear yard deck. There are four variances. And we have uh, no comment from Ravines. Planning has conditions of approval. Um, the bird friendly window treatment and dark sky compliant light fixture condition that we uh, will see a few times today. Any additional materials? Uh, we have TRC weighing in advising. They have no objection, but advising uh, as in the last that a permit is required. And that's all we have. The speaker is Eddie Perez. Hello, uh, good morning, Chairman and committee members. Uh, Eddie morning, Perez, designer and uh, agent for the owner. Good morning, sir. Uh, your op your client is okay with the uh, conditions of approval from community planning. Yeah, we're okay with that. Okay, uh, let's see if members have any questions for you. Very straightforward application. Uh, Danny, but this was a quick question. Then ready for a motion. If there are no further questions, uh, Mr. Perez, number two thirty five. The building that is that's a large residential building as well. It has a funny odd shape. Pardon me? Number 235, the next door neighbor. Okay, 235, yeah. Is is that a residential house with a big, it looks like a hammerhead type of layout. It's a building it's behind your building. Yeah, it is residential. Okay, and it seems at the same scale. Okay, yeah. thank you. If uh, there are no further questions from the members, I'm ready for a motion, but I'll wait to see if there are any questions. Any questions? Doesn't look like there are any, Danny. Okay, so uh, I'd like to move for approval. Find the variances are minor in nature, uh, conditional on the planning condition um, submitted in the in our document. Thank you. Okay. Second for that, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. You have your approval. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Have a good day. Okay. Um, Adam is uh, 
agent on number four back. Mr. Chair, yes, the agent is back with the information that you guys were looking for. So I'll uh, unmute him now. Okay. Mr. Edred. All right, go ahead, Bill. Yes, I'm back. Yep, thank you, Adam. Yeah, the lease expires April 30th, 2026. Okay, thank you for that. Um, members, uh, any further questions or is someone ready to weigh in with uh, the motion that they were uh, thinking of? I would be prepared to make a motion uh, to approve this uh, variance application for that duration for a uh, to to extend instead of a two year period to extend it until the end of that lease period so that is april 2026 30th. what was the april actual 30th, date? sorry april 30th 2026 so i would be prepared to make that motion to approve the variance uh, uh based on that on that date so just until that date Okay, so a time limited approval, which uh, time limited approval ending on that date, yes. Okay. We have a all second. All Mr. Okay, all in favor. And I and I hope this helps getting a business license. I hope this helps them to get Mr. one. Mr. Taylor, you're opposed. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, I am. Yeah, you would have preferred you, you does anybody want an explanation or just? Yes, we'll just yes, yes. Sure, I'd like to hear it. Okay. Um, I believe that this is not a core, core employment area and never will be. I think it's a fairly new mall. It's actually two on either side of a very large parking lot. I think it's uh, the destiny of this area is what it is. It's, it is service shops. I went up and down the mall and I saw the barber shop and the bakery. And I just, I just, I don't feel comfortable. Um, forcing this small business to kind of be the trigger point for this municipal comprehensive review process. Um, you know, I think if the city wants to do a municipal comprehensive review process, redesignate this land, evict all the tenants, that that should be their responsibility. I, I just I just don't think we should be so you, this, this small do you business. Think this should, do you think this should be a rezoning application? No, I think I think this should be allowed, and the onus should be on the city to do whatever they want, OP when zoning wise. I would certainly not, agree. not force these small businesses to. Uh, yeah, I don't think we initiate to make, it to make this guy come back in five for in, in April twenty twenty six to to pay another fee and have it extended, and even it's that's not even you know I don't understand why community planning was against this, but I have a lot of experience dealing with these mixed use plazas, and that's the way things have evolved. Um, and, and if you look at the existing, so why pick on this guy? It's, if you read the quote that I read out, it's because to avoid the convergence of industrial and retail and industrial and personal service, that it's not compatible, which they're right. But this, not at this property, there's no so heavy or any. I can withdraw my motion and I could, I could entertain yeah. another motion for Mr. Yeah. Taylor if he would like to make that motion. Yes, if you're prepared to do that, that is certainly. Well, hold on. We we've, we've already had a motion and a seconder, and we did have a vote, and the only person opposed was Don Taylor. Well, I was opposed too. Okay, but it's I, still very. Uh, I don't see the harm in, uh, you know, Mister Mister Taylor has brought this to the attention. He actually did a site visit. I was you know trying to find out what the other uses were, but when you read the wording, it just doesn't make sense. So I'm not I'm not able to withdraw my motion then. We have to vote on it, so you open up the vote. Once I open up the vote, it's too late. We Nine had seconds. a vote. Yeah, we had a vote. Yeah, no, I realize that. Okay. Okay, if that's the rule, so the motion carries three to two. The application is for a time limited period with Michael Clark and Donald Taylor uh, dissenting, but clearly dissenting not because they wanted to refuse, because they wanted it permanent. If that can be explained in the minutes, I guess, for the the committee down and they're on the road in 2026, they'll probably have to make that ahead of time to make sure they, and they do have renewal options, I would imagine as well, which I believe Mr. Edgar did mention. Okay, so uh, that's that, that ends that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.
I was just thinking of last uh, hearing. Oh, that was just Mr. Kamarik uh, changed, brought a motion. The motion was defeated, and then he changed his vote. But that's a different situation, I guess. Okay, it was a different motion because his motion didn't carry. Okay. Um, okay. Our next application is, I guess, uh, sort of uh, probably longest one of the entire day. And then perhaps we'll take a break after that. So it's item number seven, 18 Villa Road. Mr. Chair, I'd like to bring to your attention all area neighbors are present on the call at this time. Okay, so that means we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight speakers. Uh, oh, sorry, nine on, on the next page. So we have nine speakers uh, in addition to Mr. Robano. So this is an application to construct a second story addition above the existing dwelling, a two story rear addition, a new covered front porch. There are two variances. Here's my notes. Hold on. Hold on. You're with me, please. Thank you. Okay, lots on this. Um, we have supporting materials um, from uh, context montage, overhead photos, plans, email regarding the urban forestry inspection by the uh, assistant planner. We have the checklist, the long branch checklist filled out. We have the previous decision, a refusal in May 5th, 2022. A different agent was Mr. Kuna. Now we have Mr. Romano. So I'd like to hear in his presentation. Obviously, he's going to tell us how it's different. Planning uh, is now looking. They're no longer. Um, they're not opposed. They're looking for condition approval. Uh, a construct is illustrate situation uh, regarding the front elevation. Regarding the design and materials of the front elevation, a little unusual condition, which I'm sure we'll hear from Mr. Romano. Forestry is looking to have us deny variance one, the FSI, FSI for a lot uh, a permanent uh, loss of viable planting space. Uh, we have Metrolinks advisory. We have 25 letters of support plus two, it looks like, and 16 letters of opposition. Uh, so there's a lot of interest in this application. And in the additional materials, we have an addendum to the Arborist report. Uh, dated December the 5th with additional recommendations and some sort of a presentation of opposition from something that I was a little confused about who it's from and what it's about. So perhaps we can hear that at the appropriate time, uh, staff. Okay, so let's turn it over to uh, Mr. Romano. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, uh, panel member Romano, Action Planning 2095 Autumn Breeze Per Credit. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so there are not, there are actually eight because I see one of the speakers is actually the homeowners on the line uh, to observe and be available for questioning. Okay, Mr. Romano, let's restart the clock and uh, let's get your presentation up on the board. Yes, please. I would to uh, refer to my presentation material. Slide one is an air photo. And we'll see the subject site. And the subject site is located on the north side of. Villa Road. Villa Road's a short uh, cul-de-sac. Yeah, but, but Mr. Romano, let's first of all let's let's wait till we get it up on the board. I know they're having some problems at the uh, uh, Civic Center with their uh, Wi-Fi or something. But uh, the staff, we're trying to get that up on the board. There we go. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, so the site's located on the north side of Villa Road. It's about mid block and on this street, it's a short cul-de-sac. You'll see that it's, there's a mixture of detached, semi-detached and apartment building types and building forms. They are one to two larger. And what we'll actually zoom in a little bit, if we can zoom in on the subject site. The proposal today is, differs from the one that was refused by the committee. The one that was refused by the committee had six variances. Both side yard setbacks were a variance, uh, and there were a number of other variances. The proposal for this panel today is for a shorter building, not only in, it is shorter in height, 
It is shorter in wall height. It is for a building that has a west side yard setback that is zoning bylaw compliant. The two variances that are in front of this panel are for floor space index and for an east side yard setback. The east side yard setback is on the right hand side of this uh, property. What you will see on this air photo are two white lines on the subject property. The front of the building that is currently existing is being uh, demolished. There is a front part of the building, it's basically an enclosed porch. It was done sometime after the building was constructed. That is being demolished. So there is actually a larger front yard landscaped and open space area that is being proposed as part of this application. So that is contrary to urban forestry's interpretation, which is that there is a reduction in front yard uh, viable planting space. There's actually an increase. To the rear, you'll see that the white line is shorter than the building to the east and obviously longer than what exists and longer than what's next door. But there is a cedar, a white cedar hedge that are that is referred to as trees and some people, including the neighbor to the west, are, are trying to get it identified as historic. Those cedar hedges are not on the subject property. Those cedar hedges are not being removed. The proposed building addition would have a west side yard setback that is zoning bylaw compliant and would have a, uh, a distance to their um, to the trunk of those cedars of 83 centimeters and larger. So there is no um, there's obviously going to be an injury, but the injury in the Arbor's report says that it is acceptable. And I can speak more to that perhaps um, after some other person speak. On the second page, thank you, we'll see that there's an eclectic mixture of dwellings, of residential buildings. And these buildings range from one to two stories. And we will see in the lower left-hand side, the front elevation for the proposal it is an 8.49 meter building height. So that is shorter than those two buildings right beside the front elevation, which are 8.8 .8 meters. The proposed build, building elevation has a wall height of 5.99 meters. Those two buildings next to it in the lower left have wall heights of 7.53 meters. So those are larger buildings. Those buildings have floor space indices of 0 0.59 and 0 0.61, and they are duplexes and triplexes in a detached dwelling built form. If we look at the subject site, the upper right, number 18, we'll see that there is no parking on the subject property. The, par the parking that's, that's provided for this property is basically on a right of way and overlaps the neighboring building at number 16. So the proposal is to have a private driveway, take parking off of other people's properties, take parking off of the street. The driveway and the parking would be fully zoning bylaw compliant. The neighbor to the east, number 16, and nine people, nine residents on Villa Road support this application. We move to the next slide, we'll see that there's been some changes, and I'll speak to this a little more later because I'm running out of time. But if we move to the uh, to the site plan at slide number four, you will see that there are three colors on this site plan. The in yellow, the existing building of one story is to remain. In blue or purple, that is where the top up is proposed, and then in gray, that is where the rear addition is proposed. So we'll see the. To the at the top, that's the west side yard that is zoning bylaw compliant. And we'll see in the front the landscaping, both in the boulevard and on private property. And there is more there than what I'm showing in the survey excerpt in the upper left. So there's actually more front yard landscaping. And there is no existing city tree, there is no existing on site uh, private tree that's being impacted. So subject to any questions, I submit that the two variances 
are uh, acceptable, appropriate, and should be approved. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Romano. I'll let you go on a little bit longer because uh, there are nine, eight people uh, registered to speak. I don't know how many are opposed and how many are in favor, but uh, I think it was important that you get uh, to make your presentation. Um, and again, there are only two variances. So um, there were five, I guess, on the refusal. You Thank you for explaining how this application is different than the previous application. Um, any questions for Mr. Romano before we go and hear from the neighbors? Yeah, Paul, a couple of quick questions. So you're you're building on top of the existing building, so you're maintaining more or less the footprint, except you're taking off part of the front. Is that correct? Yes, thank you for that question uh, through Mr. Chairman. The when one looks at the front of this house, there that front uh, part that projects from what is um, the original front wall of the building is being removed. Yes. Okay, and then the, the addition at the rear matches uh, the zoning setbacks that are required. Uh, not entirely, no. The west side yard setback is zoning bylaw compliant. The east side yard setback is a uh, variance, 0 0.67 whereas uh, 0 0.9 meters is required, but the 0 0.67 is is the existing uh, east side yard setback is just being extended. Okay, thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. No further questions. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Any other questions for Mr. Romano? Okay, if not, let's- Danny uh, Bellissimo has a quick question. Um, Mr. Romano, I'm confused about forestry's recommendation here. Um, your slide number four shows more landscaping being proposed, as you indicate in your presentation, and it seems to be room for a, for a tree there. Is that not correct in the front? Yes, but, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for that. And it's uh, there's more than ample room for uh, trees to be planted in in the front. Urban forestry, and, and, and that's in the city right of way, correct? It's in the city right away, and there's certainly Good. space to. Uh, so I'm I'm very confused about well. yeah. It sort of throws me with their saying refusal. Okay, it makes no sense to me. Thank you. You're welcome. It's not the first time. Um, it won't be the last. Okay, so let's hear from the the first neighbor up on the list, and we'll hear in the order listed acceptable as an accommodation to the uh, our friends at the Long Branch uh, Neighbor Association will let Mr. Choll's uh, bat clean up and go last. So we'll go in order. The first person on the list is Heidi uh, Valdmanis at 19 Villa Road, uh, right across the street. Mr. Chair, I'd like to let Heidi know that she's been bumped as to, into a panelist section, so she is able to turn on her video camera, as oh. she did know she wanted to be on video today. So Heidi, if you'd like, you can uh, start your video and we'll bring you up on screen as well. Okay, very good. I see we have four of the speakers uh, on this application registered to uh, do a video appearance. I'm surprised why more people don't do that, but so we can see a face to go with the uh, voice. Okay, welcome. Again, Thank Heidi, you. you'll have to turn your, your video on yourself if you'd like to show it. She's on. Yeah. I'm on? Oh, sorry, You're we on, have- we see we, ya. We don't, oh, I don't see you here in the chamber, that's all. Yeah. Oh, apologies. Okay, thank you. Hi. Good morning. My name is Heidi Veldmanis, and I live at 19 Villa Road. I live directly across the road of 18 Villa Road. We moved into 19 Villa Road in, in 2018 as a family of five. When purchasing 19 Villa Road, we knew that expanding the house was necessary in order for our three children to have space to grow thrive and to have personal space, space which everyone needs when growing up. We added multiple bedrooms, an extremely large bathroom, a huge front facing window that faces directly onto Villa Road and with zero interference from anybody living on the street. I wanted to talk at this hearing to offer my full support with respect to the two minor variances and permission sought at 18 Villa Road since we live directly across the street from 18 Villa, we are direct stakeholders in this application and would like to make our support of this application known to the committee. After receiving the particular notice, I spoke to the owners about my support of their proposal. 
It is clear to me that the intent of this application for minor variance is to absolutely enhance and upgrade a single family dwelling and to provide the owners with additional space for their young and growing family. This is exactly why I renovated this house that I live in so that we could continue to raise our children in the Long Branch community in the, uh, just with the additional space for them to grow and thrive. It is further evident to me that their proposed single family home would absolutely fit on Villa Road and it would enhance the street landscape as well as to the wider community. Cities today that want to thrive have to be able to grow they need to be livable, sustainable, diverse, and welcoming. I have seen the single site plans for the proposed renovation at 18 Villa Road, and I'm aware of the application to the Committee of Adjustment for the minor variances to increase the allowable floor space index and to increase a, uh, sorry, include a side yard setback. The FSI is comparable to the other renovated homes in Long Branch. In fact, many homes in Toronto are currently going through very similar renovations. The look and design of the home fits perfectly for Villa Road. The side yard variance is not a concern to the owner of 16 Villa Road, and it affects a right of way that cannot be used. I understand that there are objections related to a cedar hedge line on the neighboring property, which is also directly in front of my house. Those aren't protected trees. They can be cut down at any time by the owner with no permits or implications. The property can also be sold and those hedges can be removed without incident. In fact, there once was a very large cedar hedge at the front of the neighboring property that for some reason has completely disappeared a while back. I don't recall any permits being issued for those removals. As stated clearly, they are removable with zero implications. The owners of 18 Villa Road, Christopher and Katya, did consult an arborist who created a site plan for preserving the hedges in the backyard. Those backyard hedges are not in harm's way, and they even modified further the original design to make it very clear that the trees are safe and to provide comfort to the neighbor in question as a source of goodwill. Those cedar trees should not be the, de the determinant factor in this application. Villa Road needs to look forward and thrive. And as a result, I offer my utmost support of the application. I believe that minor variances stated in their application fulfill all of the four tests of the Committee of Adjustments. Thank you for your time and listening to the people who live on Villa Road and for the hearing of our United Stand in support of the development of 18 Villa Road. We all want Katia, Christopher, and their young family to be able to stay and grow with us just like a strong community should. I strongly encourage and, uh, sorry, I strongly encourage the committee to approve this application. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions for Mrs. Valmanis? Ms. Valmanis. And I just like to point out, I've been, you know, I, when I made my review of this application, and again, I'm just doing it as uh, as the first speaker is, is making her comments. Where you normally see such a large, some, you know, 27 letters of support or 16 letters of opposition. It's not by the numbers anyway, but often they're form letters and they're all the same. Here, people have gone to the trouble of actually writing. Uh, I'm sure there's some cut and paste where people have borrowed a neighbor's, but. More or less, they're all individual letters, which is quite quite something. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we're very supportive of this application. They're a lovely family, and it would just honestly be a detriment to see them go. We need more people like their family around. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, no other questions. We'll go to the next speaker, Alexandra Thomas at Twenty Seven Cool Avenue. It says not an area resident, so we'll perhaps hear what Alexandra's interest in this application is and where she lives in relation to the property. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, hello. I am the mother of Katya Texera and a longtime Etobicoke resident. I felt it was important to speak here not only in support of the application, but to understand the reasoning for the various letters submitted by the residents. The good news is that there is tremendous support for this application most importantly by the direct neighbors on Villa. 
As you can see, there is support from 10 neighbors who live on Villa, one on Branch, which backs onto Villa. These are the people most impacted by the application. They are the ones that live there, see the benefit of this renovation means to the street, and their voices need to be heard. There are also 16 other supporting who live in Long Branch and areas close to Long Branch. They reached out and understand that this application reduces the variances down to two and that the variances be considered minor because they truly are. The increased FSI is no more than what is happening in other neighborhoods, including mine. The side variance on the east side of the way is really not valid because it is fully accepted by 16 Villa Road. The new plans increase the distance of the renovation away from the cedar hedge on 22 Villa. This was done to reduce the risk to neighboring property. Even though these were not protected trees, a cost of design update was made to accommodate a direct neighbor. The plan for the renovation and the arborist report were communicated and made available to all interested parties, including the one neighboring objecting. Even though all plans survey and arborist reports were shared with the neighborhood, we were surprised to find that 22 Villa owner entered a last minute arborist report as a letter of objection on December 1st. This was a report from Jack Radicki written back in July 5th and not shared with anyone. His report does refer to the survey, the site plan and the Davy tree report, which we provided to the objecting neighbor. This report was sent to Davy Tree and they have responded with an addendum page that addresses the concerns of Jack Radicki. In summary, the Jack Radicki report provides instructions on how to do and use during the excavation process. This is very helpful to know that a second arborist agrees to the process plan. The Davy addendum agrees with the second arborist with regards to process to use during excavation. Disagrees that the branches will be cut and damaged. They will be tied back. Pruning will be only limited to where it is. And also recommends a tree fertilizer, Arbor Green Pro, to be used. What is disputed is the picture from 1949 showing a tree in the backyard. That tree is not the cedar hedge that's currently there. In fact, that tree was likely a tree that had been previously cut down and existed between the property lines. A tree stump is still there today. Overhead pictures confirm this because there are no hedges visible on the east or west side of the property. Claims about tree heritage are highly questionable. One objector from North York claimed to be an assessor for the Ontario Urban Forest Council, and that letter had to be retracted when that organization had no working relationship with her nor Jack Radicki. Both letters are part of the package. It's further interesting that heritage status is claimed only for the hedge adjacent to 18 Villa, while ignoring claims for the same cedars on the west side of the property, nor the 60 centimeter majestic maple at the rear of their property. What is clear is that the renovation can proceed now that we have a pathway that protects adjacent properties. The heater, cedar hedge is not city protected, but as a concession, plans were changed to accommodate the neighbor. There were four documents entered as letters of objection directly from 22 Villa. We fully respect credible comments about the renovation, but personal comments have no place in planning applications. All plans have been fully shared with the objecting neighbor while she kept back the second arborist report. We quickly informed Davy Tree who created an addendum to the original arborist report. Katya and Christopher have been very open, respectful and communicative, clearly all their intentions. This is evidenced by the overwhelming support shown to them, which they are very thankful for. A street came together to support a family. Other objectors were the Long Branch Association, two letters who evidently don't really represent the neighborhood. The rest of objectors who live far from Long Branch are not stakeholders. Some of those letters coincidentally had exact word for word sentences and referenced the previous Ward 3 counselor. We even had a letter from the previous owner of 18 Villa who left in 2017 and now lives in Leamington, Ontario, right? An objection okay. related. You know what, ma'am, ma'am, you know, I think you've gone on for three minutes. I'm going to cut you off and ask you to, to wrap up and I'll tell you why after you've done so. Okay. No problem. okay. You're, you're the, you're the mother-in-law of the applicant or the mother of the applicant. They have their agent, Mr. Roman, who is a very capable uh, agent. 
Um, and uh, I think, and I see we have another speaker, Ryu Texera, uh, is another relative who's not an area resident. I don't think we need to hear from that person as well. I appreciate your hearing support of your daughter, and I like what you said for the last, but I think let's cut it off. You're telling about other people who aren't in the area. Well, you're not in the area either. You're an interested party. So thank you. Um, but I don't think we need to hear any further from you. Uh, you've made your points clear. Okay. Thank you very does anyone much. Anyone have the yeah? Does any you are the mother? You are the mother of the applicant, correct? That's what you said at the outset, right? So I am the mother of the applicant, correct? Yeah. So, okay. I think so. I think you've said what you had to say. And when you're getting into talking about other people who are writing in letters who aren't in the area, well, let's you know people living. You're you're doing the same sort of so. I, I was very patient and let you proceed and uh, in support of your daughter. You did a very good job, but let's not go into hearing how other people aren't in the area because you're not in the area. Okay. Any questions for um, for the speaker, Ms. Thomas? Okay. Uh, in which case, we'll hear from the next neighbor, which is uh, Laura Lee Terrian, who's a neighbor at 22, um, who's objecting to this application. Or I guess one house over. Is there a 20? There is a 20. No, that's both. Uh, it's my lot. So you're in the next door lot is 22. Correct. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Laura. On... My name is Laura Lee Terrian. Uh, I'd like slide number one up, please. Yeah. Okay. This is your letter. The MIGS wet. I wasn't understanding yes. who that was. I will explain. It's a visual presentation. I'm a okay. visual learner and I learn from seeing pictures. Me and too. I'm a, and Me I'm too. a visual educator as well. So my name Wonderful. is Laura Lee Terrian and I am the owner of 22 Villa Road. And I'm really thankful to have this opportunity to use my voice before the committee today. Miigwech. Next slide, please. As a reminder, our internet is running a bit slower here at the office, so please continue along. Thank you. To give voice is one of the most powerful expressions of being that exists. Next slide, please. Public speaking is one of the most feared things by humans, and this fear can be so powerful that it can inhibit a person's ability to hear, act, or speak effectively to exercise their rights. Next slide, please. If you add speaking about complex municipal process, building principles, case precedents, new bills introduced during the notice period that revoked anyone's ability to appeal decision except the applicants, this experience is overwhelming. Arbors reports, legal counsel, historical research. I have spent a fair amount of time and energy and money to establish border trees and complete this heritage file for lots 186, 187, and 188 of plan 2172, Village of Long Branch. This committee turned down this application in May when the applicants requested mediation and I agreed. It was the applicants who abandoned T-Lab. Now we're back here again with a plan I don't agree with. And I do not have the right to appeal any decision made today. And I had hoped that mediation through T-Lab would have gotten us to a place and a plan that would have worked for all parties. Why do these applicants continue to omit simple tree diagrams from their building plans? Diagrams on the plans could have provided context and clarification regarding their intent to injure these heritage border trees. Next slide, please. I'm asking this committee to decline this application re and reject the errors and omissions contained in this file. Next slide, please. I am the 100% owner of these lands. I do not consent to any injury at all to these trees. And I'm asking this committee to decline this application and allow me to return to quiet title of my property. Next slide, please. Every evening I sit by these trees in my studio and there is life. 
It is a studio that Percy Durant built as his carpentry shop, where he cut the lumber to build many of the homes on Villa Road, including 13, 16, and 21. This is where the Durant's grandchildren played and watched grandpa build houses, and they chased the chickens. If you were here when Long Branch Dominion was open, you would have found Orma Durant standing behind the deli counter, serving customers with a smile, a wise cracker too. I am grateful that I can honor the memory of my feisty friend, Orma, and the Durant Stevenson families by regaling the stories of what Long Branch used to be like all those years ago by preserving this stand of trees. It is for this and many other reasons that I'm asking this committee to decline this application today and protect this heritage. It has been more than 23 years that these trees have now intertwined with my legacy. Like family, these trees contribute to my life in ways that I cannot possibly describe. It would be like describing the taste of a peach to someone who's never experienced a peach. I could say it's juicy, I could say it's fuzzy, maybe it feels a bit like a mango, but I will never truly convey the experience of the taste of a peach until you've eaten a peach yourself. These trees contribute to our health and well-being as an integral part of life itself. It is for this reason and all of the other reasons that I've already said to this committee in writing and today that I am requesting that you decline this application. Chi miigwech, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Green. Uh, anyone have any questions for the speaker? Okay, if not, we'll go on to, I guess Mr. Scholz is next. We'll put Mr. Scholz at the end. So the next speaker is Karen Bennett at 16 Villa Road, right next door on the other side. Mr. Chair, members, uh, Karen has asked to be on video, so I'm going to move them over to make them a panelist now. Karen, if you'd like, you have the opportunity now to engage your camera. You'll have to do that on your own by clicking the start video button. All right. You are unmuted. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Karen Bennett. I live at 16 Villa Road, the property on the east side of 18 Villa Road. I share a right of way with 18 Villa and access my backyard by way of the shared right of way. As the neighbor that will be most impacted by this project, it is important the committee understand my full and complete support of this proposal. This proposal is to build a home that better meets the needs of a young family. It is a modest home consistent in style to other Long Branch homes with square footage of approximately 1,932 square feet. This is not a monster home. The proposal is no bigger than many two-story homes on this street and every other street of the Long Branch neighborhood. It stands to reason that every family and every property has a history. That's inevitable. It's not pertinent to the decision at hand. Everyone deserves respect and equal opportunity. No one property owner is more important than another and every property owner has the right to develop and use their property to its best outcome without the control of a neighbor. There will be absolutely no destruction of the green space at 18 Villa. The variance requested will be built in place of the existing deck. The current home is dated and does not meet the needs of a family. A new home would look better and function better for the family, the environment, and for the aesthetic of the street. There is no downside here. This is a perfect solution for a young family. They have been settled in this area for five and a half years. It bothers me tremendously that people are so busy looking out for themselves and trying to hold on to their piece of pie that they are willing to aggravate a family. It is incumbent upon all of us in the GTA and in Long Branch to look out for others and step up and help. I am so proud of the overwhelming support for this project from the neighbors on Villa Road, the neighbors that are directly affected by this proposal. They are really good people that look out for each other, the kind of people that make a great community and the kind of people that you want as your neighbors. I would like to address the cedar hedge belonging to 22 Villa Road. The trees were planted too close to the property line. They infringe on the backyard of 18 Villa and are not city protected. The trees are out of control and cause the backyard of 18 Villa to be in shade throughout the afternoon. 
A determination of what can be done to a property should not be based on the fact that a neighbor planted trees too close to the property line. Any such decision based on the trees would in essence devalue the property of 18 Villa and not allow the owners to realize the true value of their property. I'm very certain that absolutely no homeowner would agree that a neighbor should have the power to determine the use and value of their property based on where that neighbor planted trees. It is important to note that 22 Villa Road has cedar hedges on both sides of the yard. There are eight cedars on the east side and 14 cedars on the west side. So there are plenty of trees to provide a habitat for squirrels and birds. Also, just as a note, the building of a home at 18 Villa will not impact how other people plant their gardens or harvest their food on their own properties. When Katya and Christopher first decided to pursue this project, they spoke to me and Christopher spoke to Laura, the owner of 22 Villa. They received positive affirmations about the project. Later, they found out that Laura had registered an objection. At that time, Laura approached me and told me she was concerned about three things, drainage, the placement of the AC unit and her privacy. My answer to her was that drainage would be satisfied by city construction laws and not to worry. And then I said to her that nobody has complete privacy as we live in the city. All of my neighbors can look into my yard. I'm okay with that as I understand that I live in a large metropolitan area. Positive and proper growth needs to be encouraged in Long Branch. If the area does not continually improve and grow, then it will deteriorate. We are already seeing it on Lakeshore with the lack of healthy business development. Attracting great businesses will not happen if we don't have the same caliber of housing. As I mentioned, the overwhelming majority support of this proposal among residents of Villa Road is absolutely clear. I strongly encourage the committee to approve and support this project and the wishes of the neighbors of Villa Road. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Um, any questions for the speaker, members? Okay. Like I said, uh, the support, the a lot of interest in this application. Uh, next speaker is Ryan Gray at 24 Villa Road. Thank you, Chair and committee members. Mr. Chair and members, and before we start, I'd like to remind that Ryan asked to be on video, so I'm going to go and make him a panelist now. Ryan, if you'd like, you're now a panelist, so you can start your video uh, by clicking the Start Video button. Thank you. Um, thank you again for allowing me to speak today and voice my support for the proposal at 18 Villa Road. I am the owner of 24 Villa Road, an immediate neighbor to 18 Villa. Katja, Chris, and their kids, Nicholas and Zara, are part of this community. They have grown up on this street, attend schools in the community, and catch as a primary teacher at a local public school. These are not flippers, they're not developers seeking profit on some monster home, but they're good people looking to strengthen the roots that they have in this community for many years to come. While many people may complain about bureaucracy and red tape, I fundamentally believe in good government and suggest that this, these principles are illustrated by this application in the work of your committee. While I also initially supported the initial proposal, Katja and Chris heard the concerns raised and have gone back to work with stakeholders to amend the plans and, in my opinion, have a great end result. The number of variances has been significantly reduced to just the two, and there's a meaningful plan in place from a reputable third party arborist to prevent any harm to the Cedars at 22 Villa. This home will suit the neighborhood. With respect to community support, I encourage you to count the letters of support again and look at those of us from Villa Road here to speak today in support of this application. By my count, 50% of the residences on Villa openly wrote to you in support of this build. That's more engagement than we see in many municipal elections. The LBNA is in opposition, of course, but I couldn't find a recent development application where they weren't in opposition. And in this case, they do not represent Villa Road. Specifically, the LBNA objections in their letter mention a west side setback, which is unfounded as that's not a variance being requested. requested. Um, the LBNA's own FSI map attached shows no less than 12 houses in the same FSI range within the surrounding three blocks. And lastly, I've already mentioned the arborist plan to protect the cedars at 22 Villa. Other letters speak to unaffordability in the neighborhood, which is a real concern, but it's not within the scope of variances or this meeting or one that will be fixed by denying this application. 
And lastly, I wanted to speak quickly to the concerns raised by 22 Villa, the sole residents on Villa Road who are in opposition. Since initially being informed of the development plans, the residents have made clear they intend to obstruct by any means necessary. I have to give a lot of credit to the timeline and history that was researched and provided. It was really well written and I found it very informative uh, as it shared some history of our property. But I also spoke to Orma on several occasions and when we talked about our house being built in 1926, she never uh, disagreed, she concurred. So I'm, we may need to confirm some of the facts in there, that's all I'm saying. The date matches the history and everything I have of our own house. Um, Previously, we've had a very neighborly relationship with the owner of 22 Villa Road. Um, our kids used to pick berries in their yard. Uh, she would regularly borrow our yard tools. Uh, and throughout this whole time that I've lived here, we've never heard anything about heritage concerns. Um, two years ago, I replaced some of the rotting siding on my mudroom. And uh, the residents of 22 Villa said countless times how good it looks, never once saying it might be a heritage feature. Um, it's also convenient to point out supposedly historic brickwork when they've stuccoed, stuccoed over their own house. I'm not here to, all of that aside, uh, following a long summer of consultation where Chris and Katja have reworked their plans to eliminate the west side setback, ensure little to no harm comes to the cedars, they still continue to hear new concerns emerge from this property about the build. I'm asking the committee to put all of that aside and come back to why we are here today to review the variances being requested and apply the four tests fairly. I'm, I'm confident you will find that, yes, this meets the general intent and purpose of the city's official plan and will allow the, the lot to um, realize its full potential, balancing development and nature. Yes, the general intent and the uh, purpose of the city's bylaws are maintained. The application is not significantly different than its immediate neighbor and at least 12 other properties within three blocks. Yes, the pro proposal is appropriate for the development of the land in our building. Building significant effort has been made to have this meet the needs of the applicants growing family while working with the neighborhood stakeholders. And finally, yes, the variance requested is minor. As mentioned, the two being uh, specifically requested, the setback is smaller than a schoolyard ruler uh, on the east side. And uh, the FSI is again in line with many, 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 a dozen properties in the immediate area as per the Long Branch Neighborhood Association's own submission. Sorry, excuse me. Villa Road is in support of this application and for the reasons mentioned above, I encourage you to approve it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Any questions for Mr. Gray? Okay, if not, well, we're not gonna hear from Mr. Uh, or so I don't know if it's Mr. or Mrs. Ryui. A Texiera, who's another relative in support uh, of the application, who doesn't live in the area. Uh, so, uh, with my, uh, uh, I think we can. We don't need to hear from that person. We've heard from a lot of people in support. The next speaker is um, okay. We have the applicants on the line. We're not going to hear from them. Them, the homeowners, because they're represented by Mr. Uh, very ably by Mr. Um, Romano. So I believe we have one more speaker, Stephen Avella, and we have a letter from him. He's at 42 Ash Crescent. He Ms. is an area resident. Mr. Chair, members, I'd like to note Stephen has asked to be um, on video. So I've moved Stephen over to be a panelist. Stephen, you are now able to start your video by clicking the start video button. You are also unmuted. Go ahead. You are also unmuted. Go ahead. Hi, how are you? Uh, good. I'm just trying to, uh, just trying to hear. Oh, hear. Oh, can you hear I'm me all right? Scrolling, uh, scrolling, just trying to see if we can see you on screen. Oh, there you are. Welcome. Hello. Welcome, uh, can sir. you pull up my letter, please? Oh, there it is. Thank you. Uh, well, my name is Peter Gala. I live at 42 Ash Crescent. We have lived in Long Branch. Oh, I'm, I'm I, as a for full disclosure, I am on the Long Branch Neighborhood Association. I'm on the board of directors there, but I'm, I'm appearing as Steve Vela from the neighborhood. Okay. okay. We have lived in Long Branch since 1995 on Ash Crescent and also Alder Crescent. We raised three children in a three bedroom, 100 year old home with an FSI of 0.13, and, which is about 1200 square feet. This letter okay. is in opposition to the proposed variances requested by the applicant. Uh, the applications variances do not meet the four test and the application 
does not support the official plan. The applicant is requesting an FSI of 0.86 when the maximum FSI permitted is 0.35, and that's 194% variance. The variance is supposed to be minor, and a request for almost 200% of the maximum allowed is not minor. Merriam-Webster defined minor as inferior in important size or degree, comparatively unimportant. For example, like anyone we'd even notice, 200% more than the maximum allowed is very noticeable. Side yard setback of 0.67 on the east side, when the minimum permitted is 0.9, is a 25% reduction. Not only is this unreasonable, in position to the neighbor and not minor, it is also dangerous for the homeowner. How will the emergency responders enter the backyard if needed? As a good and respectful neighbor, the applicant should draw plans to have the side yard setback large enough to have tree protection and hoarding built. There is no requirement that all developments must be 0.9 meters from the lot line. It is the closest the bylaw will allow in conjunction with the other bylaw parameters, which includes the FSI. If the FSI were the allowable maximum, the side yard setback could be increased to build tree protection for the neighbor's trees. As the, the, tree, the, the extension along the back of the house is what's going to impact the trees, and that can be adjusted to have it be closer to the uh, permitted FSI. As part of the official plan, all new developments will support neighborhoods, which is 4.1.5. So the prevailing heights, massing scale, density, and dwelling type of nearby residential properties, prevailing setbacks of buildings from the streets, and site, rear and side yard setbacks. Uh, OP policy 3.1.2.1, preserve existing mature trees wherever possible and incorporating them into the development site. Preserving and 3.4.1, preserving and enhancing the urban forestry by providing suitable growing environment for trees, increasing the tree canopy coverage, especially long lived native and large shade trees, and regulating injury and destruction of the trees. So, the four tests to maintain the general intent and purpose of the OP, this development does not follow the policies that I just mentioned. Maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning, be desirable for the appropriate development or use of land, and be minor. This development request is not minor. Even though there is a slightly larger setback at the rear of the building than larger based on, on, the, on the previous uh, refused development plan, there is no tree protection for the neighbor's mature healthy trees. People have talked about it, but there is no hoarding. There is nothing that's being shown on any plans where hoarding is supposed to be there put in place to protect the trees. And when that addition is added to the back of the house, they cut lot line to lot line and drop in the foundation, which cuts out half the roots of all the trees along the side. It'll be very, uh, it'll be very bad for those trees. I understand the trees are not on the applicant's property, but they were there long before the applicant purchased the property. Yes, the trees are not a protected size, but not all trees grow at the same rate. The trees are mature and healthy. And according to either George of the Ontario Forest Council, the tree should be considered for heritage designation. There is no requirement to build on the property line, but there is a requirement to protect mature trees according to the tree protection guidelines. Forestry has asked for the Committee of Adjustments to deny variance one as the large FSI will destroy the mature trees, the extension. There are other options for the applicant and ways to meet the general intent and purpose of the OP. The four tests require all variances to be minor and the requested variances are major. My request to this committee is to not allow, it's not an approved development on this property until the applicant can create a development plan that supports the official plan and the plan includes tree protection. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Thank you, Mr. Bell. I'm getting some feedback here, but does anyone have any questions for Mr. Vella? Mr. Taylor? Mr. Taylor? Sorry. Yes, uh, Mr. Vella, you commented on the uh, east side lot line variance request as being uh, not minor. Are you aware that that east side lot line is an existing condition? The current the current bungalow is the current bungalow is it's existing 
the current I see that on, the, on the drawings. But when they uh, add the extension for the for the uh, for the for the addition on the back. I'm only talking about the east side lot line for now. For now, I just yes. I just want I'm just asking you if you were aware of that that is an existing condition. No, I didn't see that. No. Okay. Well, just uh, I just wanted to state that. You also described uh, in variance one. You described the floor space index uh, requested as 0 0.86. And you did a lot of mathematical manipulations to demonstrate how inappropriate that was. Are you aware that in fact the proposed FSI is 0 0.68? I just flipped the numbers around. I'm sorry. I have it in my in my my presentation. It does say 0 0.68. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, you, okay. you 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 calculated that as a 200 percent increase. In, it is 200 percent though. It's 194 percent. Your, your evidence on that, as far as I'm concerned, is, uh, is inappropriate and based on uh, your, your wrong interpretation of what factors being proposed. Excuse me, the, if the FSI is 0 0.35 according to the regulation and the proposal is 0 0.68, that's yes. almost yes. two times the FSI that's allowed, which is 194%. Okay, I just want to make a point that that's very different than the three times proposed that you uh, stated in your evidence. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I said 6.68. I meant to say point, sorry, I've said 0.86. I just flipped the numbers around in my presentation. I actually did type in 0 0.68. Just pointing out it's a now. significant difference. That's all. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, any other questions, any other Mr. Dallas? Mr. Dallas? Okay. Um, Is anyone else getting periodic feedback? Just on that last uh, yes. exchange between Mr. Taylor and Mr. Bella. Mi Mr. Chair and members, yeah, there was just a bit of feedback for that particular uh, speaker um, yeah. because of the way we moved him over, I think. And the, the speaker okay. in their own house was causing the feedback. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so again, the next speaker is the last speaker. We speak for that, Mr. Scholes, on behalf of the Long Branch Association. Uh, Mr. Gray commented that in this case, uh, the Long Branch Association, uh, I guess the, whatever their mandate is, they're here not representing, reflecting the opinion of the neighbors on Villa Road, other than, I guess, the neighbor at 22, who's written in several uh, letters, uh, some pertinent, some not pertinent. So, Mr. Bell, Mr. Scholes, can you please... Uh, uh, tell us what in particular we have against this application. I'd just like to point out also that as we've been going through community planning and their report is uh, just asking for a condition to tie the front facade to, to the plans to ensure it be built in such manner. And they pointed out, in fact, they were not opposed to the refusal back in May uh, 2022, 2022. So, uh, Mr. Scholes, I'll put it over to you. Let us know if we would like to. Um, Ms. Mercado's uh, letter put up on the board as you speak or anything else you'd like up? Yes, I would like the uh, LBNA letter. Um, it's okay. in the AIC file page to uh, 6.39 megabytes. Hey, okay, so let us know why you feel this is inappropriate when most everyone else in the street, uh, other than the next door neighbor, 22, seems to disagree with you. Okay, with that introduction, good morning. My name is Andy Jules. I live at 12 Jasmine Avenue in Long Branch. I'm a member and sit on the board of the Long Branch Neighborhood Association. I have a mission statement to protect, celebrate, and enhance the neighborhood of Long Branch. I'm here to speak to about the planned bill at 18 Villa Road. This is the second time this somewhat contentious file has come before a Committee of Adjustment. The improvements on the application are noted. Five variances reduced to two but the remaining two are really what is the cause of concern. An FSI of 0.68 is an improvement over the previous 0.74 FSI, but remains practically double the allowable FSI for the lot. The other issue is the reduced side yard setbacks of 0.67 from the east lot line and 0.18 from the west lot line when it's required as 0.9. The 0.18 side yard setback on the west between 18 and 22 seems to be the main controversy since it ha since that 
reduced setback places a group of cedars trees under threat. And this setback now being compliant was certainly news to me this morning. Uh, looking at page three, that's the one I want. Um, this lar the larger neighbor of Long Branch surrounding the applicant's property, this map uh, shows 165 lots in the blocks around the subject property. The light blue boxes are homes below, at or below 0 0.35 FSI. 136 homes out of 165 are at or below 0 0.35. The purple outline in the specific area around uh, 18 Villa, <coughs> place here, uh, as is, is the local, is the geographical neighborhood of 18 Villa as defined by official plan 4.1.5. As mentioned, the lighter blue squares indicate single detached homes with an FSI at or below 0 0.35. The darker blue indicates homes between 0 0.35 and 0 0.61. Specifically, on Villa Road, we have 0 0.61 for number 28 Villa and 0 0.59 for number 26 Villa. You can see that all of Villa, save 16 and 14, is shaded blue. Most homes are lighter blue, indicating that the FSI is 0 0.35 or below. The two orange homes have a FSI between 0 0.62 and 0 0.72, specifically 0. Oops. Build at number 18. I mentioned massing because the integral garage, of which you know the LBNA is not a fan, which creates additional massing. The garage is not included in the FSI, but takes up considerable ground floor square footage. In fact, some 240 square feet or 22.3 square meters, thus increasing the perceived size of the home as viewed from the street. This property is located less than six minutes from a streetcar loop and the GO train, so there is fairly easy access to transit. There appears to be a parking solution already in place, and we would recommend that that solution be maintained. A home with the FSI of 0 0.68 is not prevailing on the street or in this area. The four homes on Villa with FSIs above 0 0.35 were all built prior to applications being subject to the Long Branch Neighborhood Character Guidelines adopted by the Toronto City Council in January of 2018. No FSIs that large have been approved in the area since the adoption of the guidelines. Pictures of the houses on Villa are included in the last pages of the LBNA letter with pictures and are included relevant notes regarding excessive FSIs of a few of the homes and the separation of the porosity offered by the side driveways between many of the homes. Excerpts from the official plan 4.4 are included on pages four and five. I'm sure you're familiar with these, uh, are very familiar to you. Development in established neighborhoods will respect and reinforce the existing physical character of each geographical neighborhood, including C, prevailing heights, massing, scale, density, and dwelling types of nearby residential properties. E, prevailing location, design, and elevation relative to the grade, driveways, and garages. G, prevailing patterns of rear and side yard setbacks and landscape open spaces. And I, conservation of heritage buildings, structures, and relevant to this file, landscapes. I'm not really telling you anything new about this file. Similar info was presented to, at the May 5th Committee of Adjustment by Christine Mercado, the chair of the LBNA. This file has become, and I had rather contentious, but now I've changed that to very contentious. There has been much back and forth about which side has more letters either approving or objecting the application and which of those letters are more relevant given to where the letter writer lives compared to the location of the home. Uh, there's been praise given to the family at 18, which I'm sure is well-deserved. The LBNA is a, being a neighborhood association really does not want to get involved in personal squabbles between neighbors. Our desire is to keep focused on the issues related to planning and the bylaws as they relate to the plan build. As mentioned, this application was before the committee back in May when it was refused. The LBNA proposed following that hearing that the parties make use of the mediation available through T-Lab. An impartial third party can cut through some of the animosity that has built up here and is it, that is what's really needed in this case. The normal order of operations in the system of applications seems to be it's heard by the Committee of Adjustment. If you disagree with that decision, it can be appealed to T-Lab. And if it can't be settled at T-Lab, it can be appealed further to divisional court. In the past few months, I've noticed a small number of applications seem to be appearing to be repeating, repeatedly appearing before the Committee of Adjustment or coming back to the Committee of Adjustment after a decision by T-Lab. It seems to be a little out of the natural order and frankly unnecessary. 
the LBNA continues to put forth that this file should be mediated by the T-Lab and attempt to come up with a solution that all parties can live with. The only way we can accomplish that is by refusing this application today. That is the only way it might get T to T-Lab because we know with the passing of Bill 23, the only party that can appeal today's decision is the applicant. And Mr. Cherry referred to that in your intro. Mm -hmm. I've heard members of the panel say in the past, it's a 2,000 square foot house. Mr. Chair, we're at six minutes. Family, and they would not be wrong. Almost done. However, that house needs to be proportioned to the lot it is built upon. A redesign of this home could fit into the fabric of the street and the neighborhood. Unfortunately, in its present design, this house is too large for this lot and this particular street. We continue to advocate for mediation at T-Lab will hopefully result in a solution for this problem. As mentioned, that would uh, require refusal today. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Mr. Scholes. Mr. Scholes, um, yeah, you know, you didn't note that planning had no opposition to either this application or the one, or the one that was in May that was refused. Was that correct? Well, planning uh, acknowledged that uh, <laughs> acknowledged a few a few problems with the application, and then they really didn't offer a, an opinion, which which was annoying, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, if they'd offer an opinion, you could either disagree with it or yeah. In terms of the, in terms of the prevailing, you would agree certainly because you're before us every week with multiple times. You guys are busy. That this is certainly Long Branch is an area in transition. And these like 800 square foot bungalows, people uh, you need to improve them. I would take you, you appreciate that. Uh, the question is here, why this application? I guess it's mainly the uh, the 0.68 number that you don't that you don't like. But uh, the neighbors on the street, other than the next door neighbor, doesn't seem don't seem to have any issue with this. So we, we, we maintain the Would FSI you, is is too high. The uh, the two houses next door at 18 and 16. I. It, it it may appear something similar to that. I mean, it, it is somewhat shorter, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a much more massive house with the integ integral garage, which is, I, I told you, we're not a fan of that. And yeah. is it necessary? The, the parking is sort of not as important as it used to be in, in some of the applications, and they're very close to transit. So the, mm -hmm. the, the garage on the ground floor is creating a, a huge void which could be used for living space. Yeah, I see in Mr. Vela's, you, you, you show some uh, some new construction on the street in Mr. Vela, the figure one uh, showing 22, 18, 16, and 14 Vela from west to east. And then the next picture, two to 16, 18, and 22 from east to west. And there shows some large apartment buildings in the uh, in the background. So it, it does appear to be in a, an area in flux uh, in terms of what the, referring to the light blue and the dark blue homes. In terms of the, the wider neighborhood, the shorter neighborhood. Uh, I think and, you would agree that most yeah. of the neighborhood is blue. The pink stuff is uh, triplex and multis, which are right. perfectly. I'm, I'm just looking at Mr. Bella's yep. picture, and it looks like there is a from that one picture, figures one and two. There's a new yep. build. There's a little bungalow, and then there's some large, massive uh, slab buildings in the background. <clears throat> anyway, um, anyone else have any questions? If not, we'll go back to Mr. Uh, Romano for his rebuttal if he needs more time since we have had eight speakers, although not all of them have been in, in, uh, in opposition. Hopefully he can make it within his five minutes. Also note that Ian Cunha was actually mentioned, listed as the agent on the new application as well as the old application. Uh, Mr. Frank, uh, Mr. Romano, I assume, took over the file for Mr. Cunha. Or else they're working together, so perhaps you can just touch upon that. So uh, let's go back to Mr. Romano for his rebuttal. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all the speakers that uh, took the time and effort to write in and also speak and, and come to this hearing. Uh, in terms of uh, the designer, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I'm, I do not draw. I'm a registered professional planner, so Ian Cunha is the uh, designer, and that firm uh, continues to be the architectural firm. Um, I'm troubled by the last last uh, couple of series of comments that were made. Um, the Long Branch Neighborhood Association representative indicated that the planning department did not express an opinion, and I just want to read one paragraph of that staff report that relates to this application. And it's at the end of the of the report, and it says city planning staff are of the opinion that the changes represent an improvement of the proposal. Maintain the position 
that the proposed design and material of the front facade should be constructed as illustrated in the plans to ensure adherence with the Long Branch Neighborhood Character Guidelines. So the Long Branch Neighborhood Character Guidelines permit. The proposal reinforces those guidelines in terms of the front elevation, and then there's a recommendation that the front elevation be constructed. Uh, that condition of approval is appropriate and acceptable to my client. I also would like if staff can bring up, uh, I think it's page 209 of this uh, agenda item 7. It's the Long Branch Neighborhood Association letter. I was a little troubled by Mr. Choll's, uh description that it, he only heard today that the uh, west side yard setback was not at variance. If you look at the front page of the of the LDNA um, letter, it talks about a floor space index that is not before this panel today. And it talks about a west side yard setback that is not before this panel today. But I do, sorry, staff, I, I did mean to stay to page 209. 209 is a, is a uh, page 209 is the FSI map and this map too is uh, is incorrect and, and uh, misleading. And the actual letter by LBNA uh, and some of the images that are included refute this map. Because when we look at this map at page 209, it says basically that everything on, on the um, uh, on villa on the north side is single detached. There's a semi-detached dwelling or two dwellings that is semi-detached. We saw it on my air photo and there's pictures of it in the LDNA letter, the same letter. There are duplex and triplex that are on Villa that are also on the north side. And I showed pictures of it and, it, and this letter has pictures of those duplex and triplexes. And those duplexes and triplexes are at 0 0.59 and 0 0.61. And this letter by LBNA has pictures and text associated with those pictures that identify those, those uh, FSIs. So on Villa Road itself, that's, that's just a couple of examples. Uh, this representation of 0 0.35 in blue is just false and misleading. Over 40% of the properties on Villa exceed 0 0.35, and they range up to 0 0.7, which is right next door. Also on other streets on this map, and to for applications that LBNA has been a party to, including a settlement, if we just walk along Villa and go to 40th Street, at the terminus of Villa at 40th Street, 95 and 97 40th Street, with a settlement with the LBNA, were approved at floor space index of 0 0.65. I do not see that on this map. That was uh, in October of 22, so it predates this letter. There's also other properties on this map, and I can walk through a number of them, where LBNA have been a party to proceedings at the T-Lab where FSIs of 0 0.66, 0 0.68 have been approved. So this map is misleading, and what I would suggest is that the actual statistics that I have indicated and that planning staff have reviewed, planning staff are not afraid to yeah. object to uh, the floor space indices that are, that are excessive. Uh, planning staff are okay with it, and what we see on the street is a similar FSI that, that's, that's, um, to what's being proposed. In terms of tree protection, the owners have agreed to actually plant cedars in the backyard. Letter and communications were given to the neighbor at number 22 Villa. I didn't see that being referenced, unfortunately, but uh, that was all done before this application was, was prepared and, and, and before this, this panel today. So the owners have also looked at the neighbor's Harvest report that was not shared with my client before the December 1st deadline for, for sharing of information, even though that Harvest report was dated in the summer of 2022 and refers to the Harvest report that my client did prepare 
in May of 2022 and did share with everyone, including the LVNA and the neighbor. And that arborist report confirms that there will be a tie back to the canopy of the cedar hedge that is not on 18 Villa, but is on the neighboring property to the west, and that there will be no tree removal. One single tree is being removed. There will be a tree injury to those cedar hedges that is within uh, the prescribed limits that this, the arborist identifies. So there's 0 0.5 meter um, excavation, but that is uh, going to be done by hand with hand pruning of any, and there, there isn't even any gear, there's roots there, but of any roots that are within that excavation. And as I indicated in my presentation, that still provides for a tree protection of 83 centimeters and larger. Five of those eight cedar hedges will be within that affected area. So they will not be removed. They may be injured, but they will not, uh, they will be able to be retained and maintained and preserved. So I would submit, uh, and in terms of the of parking, the zoning bylaw permits and actually invites parking to be behind the wall of the dwelling. There is no variance for the parking there. And it's true that floor space index is not accounted for for the garage, but that's what the zoning bylaw says is allowed. That is basically an incentive to provide for secure on-site parking in an era where we hear, and I keep seeing all kinds of reports about car thefts, that it's a, it's a, it's more appropriate to have your vehicle in the garage than parked out front. Okay, Mr. Grimman, if you can see... try to wrap up. Yeah, you can try to wrap up, please. Sorry. Subject to any questions, sir, I would submit that the uh, variances, none of which affect uh, 22 Villa or the LBNA, uh, should be authorized subject to the urban forestry mission to uh, provide payment in lieu of planting a city tree, even though my client would be happy to plant a city tree, and also to a planning staff uh, report recommendation that the construction occur substantially in accordance with the front elevation. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Romano. And thank you for clarifying and going through that, uh, you know, and that took some time. Uh, with respect to the chart from the LBNA and pointing out certain uh, discrepancies and uh, misleading information. I, I hope Mr. Scholes is listening and uh, will uh, commit to bringing us uh, plans or, or reports and in information that is, uh, that is not misleading and is accurate. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Romano or for any of the other speakers for that matter? Don't open it up if you'd like to comment. Dan Danny Bellissimo would like to. Sir, Danny Bellissimo would like to ask some questions. Yes, Just, sir. Uh, can, can, draw, can the staff put on drawing A4, which is the floor plan um, of the proposal? And this is the first floor plan. A4 by the applicant. It's on the, in the material we were given. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Romano, uh, the, the setback on the left of, uh, I'll call it the left of that image, at the back, the living room, that, that's where the cedar hedges are, correct? That's where, that's where some of this. Yes, yeah, some of them are. And, and so what you were saying in your presentation that the excavation um, is going to be hand dug in that area, which is sensitive to those trees and that the access to the whole construction will be to the right side of that building, and that is the, the mutual driveway. I'm assuming that's how the excavation is going to happen from the back there, correct? So the, the machinery will work away from those cedar hedges then in terms of the actual excavation, and the uh, hand digging can happen at that point too, correct? That's right. That's, that's correct. Through you, Mr. Chair. My, that is in my slides, and I didn't get to point out, but there is an existing fence that is yes. uh, that is uh, just west of the of the side lot line, in between the cedar hedge 
and my client's property line. So that fence is not being altered or removed. Would also, and that also functions as like a a tree hoarding. Yes, I think the, I, I cedar hedge. Yeah, Mr. Morano, I, I I saw that in one of your pictures, or one of the pictures did show the the cedar hedges, which are overgrown and are in, in, infringing on this uh, your applicant's uh, property. Uh, so. Uh, I just wanted to point that out to the other members in this drawing because, as you can see, there is some sensitivity taken to uh, to try to minimize the damage to those cedars, and and, and the setback um, is intentional here at the rear addition. Um, so, I, I would like to make a motion if there's no further questions, but I would like to hear if there are other members who want to weigh in. I'm ready for a motion. Anyone else have any questions or can Mr. Melissima proceed? Okay, uh, so th th this is a very complicated project, but yet at the same time, very simple. Um, the sensitivity to the cedars, I think the neighbor has made some points, but I think the applicants heard them and the hand digging is, is very important. And I think they, they can be safe. Um, this is not a tear down proposal. This is not, in my mind, an extravagant home in terms of addition or work that they're being that's happening. Um, and it's on a dead end street. Being on a dead end street creates certain character. And I think the presentation of all the members today who, who came support or uh, objecting indicate that. So I think there's some so strong solidity on that street because it's a dead end street. But when I look at the straight on <clears throat> view of the of the facade had the applicant showed me all you know an image showing all the the buildings from end to end on that uh, on that dead end street it, it would have been helpful but i as an architect i can sort of put those pieces together and it seems to me that the straight on view of, of this of the surrounding buildings and streetscapes shows me that the design fits into the street context and that's what I'm looking at carefully, a street context here. This is not a large site. It's, it's only about 20 feet wide. Uh, so there's not many options for anyone who wants to do any addition. And I, and I respect the application for trying to put an, an, an addition to the back. They're sensitive to the cedar. I respect the application that they're putting a, a driveway and um, leaving room for trees in the front. I respect the application because the rear yard will be a valuable asset as opposed to putting a garage back there with a very long driveway, because this is a very narrow lot, even though there's a right of way, and I believe they have access to the back if they need to. But I respect all of that because I think it's a family home. And, uh, and for me, uh, I, I would like to move approval of the variances, um, condition on, on planning, uh, which is basically the elevation the applicant has indicated that they are in support of that condition. Thank you. And urban forestry. I think urban forestry is number five, so I don't think I'm 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 not proposing that. It's not. There's right. not number five. Is there a fallback, uh, Mr. Is so if any, a any one or two? If there's a standalone report recommending, oh yes, bill, they still recommend a condition. Which one is that? F two. Is it F two? Three. A cash and loot. Pardon three. The three. number three, yes. Okay, and I, I believe the app, the, the applicants okay with that. I'm okay with that as well. I think that they said they were happy to yes. plant a tree if necessary, but and I'm I'm happy to support. Necessary. I'm happy to support that. So yeah, they uh, said they would like to do it to plant it on their own property, but if city planning can. So we've got a mo motion by Mr. Melissimo, second by Ms. Alderson. Yes. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, we have unanimous approval on that application. Thank you for all the speakers, for all the people who wrote in, individual, not just form letters. Uh, they spoke their mind, and hopefully uh, we can move forward on this, uh, on this, and um, cooler heads can prevail. So uh, the application has been approved. It is now what time is it? Uh, Eleven fifty-three. Uh, we have not had a morning break. Uh, perhaps we can meet, uh, come reconvene at twelve o five. Uh, take a break, and then I just I just looked at the remaining applications. Only one or two have a second speaker, so we should be able to move rather quickly through the balance of the morning. 
once we reconvene. Uh, Ms. Bartosik, did you just? Yes, so I'm just, just going to try to resolve the issue with YouTube. So can we come back at 1215 because they may need some time to reset. And anyone watching on YouTube, I think we're if the stream ends, there will be a new one created. So if you do lose what you're watching, you can join again and search for a second morning session for today. Okay, so 1215. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, have a good break, everyone.